Farming has been critical to Viking survival. Whether it be crops, animals, there, there, princess, don't be scared. Or farming for building materials. But the one farm that intrigued me the most was the animal farms. I wondered if I could fit this system into a bill with my flavor added to it and make it fully automatic, even the slaughtering part. Hmm. And maybe build a functioning butcher shop. But before I started building, I needed to understand how to set up each animal farm, except for loxes. One, they're too destructive. And two, this item, the beautiful gut scent of a fish that is vital to the calling process, takes too long to kill them. One hour later. Yeah, definitely not worth my time. First, let's start with the boars and wolves. The reason why I'm starting with the boars and wolves at the same time is because their unalive process is the same. Let me break it down for you. Their system comes with a two-stage process. The first is the breeders. Placing two of the same animals, boars or wolves, in a 2 by 4 meter box to stand on a 1 by 2 meter floor on each side seems to be the standard so far based on what other Vikings have taught me. I used a 10 meter distance for the babies to be away from the breeders so they can keep on pumping out. Stage 2 the unalive chamber. This stage is a two-in-one process. It acts as an incubator and an unaliving chamber at the same time. Though, so, to make sure that the babies stay safe until grown, I needed to understand their hitbox and the pufferfish hitbox. So after testing and testing, I found the right placement of the pufferfish. To place the pufferfish at the right height, start on a wooden floor, then snap a wooden wall down, Place a wooden beam on top, then place the item stand in line with the top edge of the beam. At that height, the babies don't die prematurely, but once they are grown... Moving on to the chickens. This is a chicken breeder. Easy to make use in 45 degree roof for the chickens to stand on. Two upside down 45 degree walls on the left and right. One meter wall snapped to the top and leave the bottom open for the eggs to fall when the chickens start laying. To get the chickens in the breeder, first place a floor cover in the breeder and place three wooden walls to the left, right, and back. Place a beam on the 45 degree roof at the front and a one meter wall at the top and add a roof. Toss two eggs in and make a fire nearby so that they can start hatching. Once they have matured to hens, break the floor underneath them first so they fall into the breeder, then break the walls down around them. Do not break the 2 meter beam that is attached to the 45 degree roof because you don't want them to crawl out before sealing them in. Once you have sealed them in using like a 2 meter floor, then you are all set. Thank to some of the guys from my community server for sharing their chicken farm design that have inspired me to make this video. To make an efficient unaliving system that is going to be inside the butcher shop for the chickens, First, you need to understand their hitbox. Baby chicks have a larger hitbox compared to when they mature into hens. Baby chicks can fall through a 1.5 meter wood beam gap, while a hen can fall through a 1.25 meter wood beam gap. How to make the 1.25 meter spacing? You are going to use doors and beams. The door has three snapping points we can make use of to help us build this. Starting from the left side of the beam, set the manual snapping point to any bottom corners. Make sure that the edge of the door is in line with the edge of the wood beam. Place three doors side by side. On the third door, snap the beam to the middle, which should be 1.25 meters. Start on the new beam you added and repeat the steps. Note, the door will not be in line with the new beams that you've added. This made it easy to separate the baby chicks from the adults. Here I was able to make my first working fully automatic chicken farm. Please forgive me for the eyesore for Bill. Here is how it works. The breeders that are 10 meters away lay their eggs that falls through a 1 by 2 meter chute. It is best to have the chute this size, any bigger, and you will have baby chicks stacking inside of it creating a problem for the breeder stage of the system. Once the eggs are in the incubator chamber near a fire source for warmth, we wait for them to hatch and progress to adulthood. Here you can see Mr. Cluck Cluck is being lured by the sweet sweet aroma of the beet seeds like a zombie. 
only to go Something to note, the doorway here must be 3 meters high and 2 meters wide minimum for the hens to see the food or else this part won't work. So I had a pretty clear idea how these farms work. Next I wanted to see how I could fit them both in a compact butcher shop. I started to design a system to combine them both that will possibly fit inside the shop. This is what I came up with, just a basic concept. For the time being, I wanted to work with two animals, chickens and wolves. What I liked about this design is that I can feed them both in the same spot. At the top we have the breeders, 10 meters below is the first incubator chamber for the wolves. Below the chamber is a floor to pick up the wolf drops that is 2 meters high. The next floor below that is the incubator chamber for the baby chicks. And finally the unalive chamber that is 3 meters high where the hens fall into. In total the height of the system is 19 meters. I didn't want to do a big build, so I needed to figure out how to shrink the height of the system. So I thought, why not put parts of it on the ground in a basement, at least 6 to 7 meters of it. Currently, the limit as to how far I can dig the ground to is 8 meters from the original world generated height. However, due to the terrain is not always leveled, 7 meters deep basement may be what I could ideally achieve. So, following the four cardinal direction, north, south, east, and west, I was able to dug out a straight edge basement that is a 12 by 12 meter box. After that, I installed the farm, starting from the back, giving it a 2 meter allowance to add the fire for warmth, but also to catch any chickens that pop through the walls and try to escape. Ensure that everything was spaced out correctly, and finally added the breeders. Using a drawing I sketched to guide me through the process, I focused my attention on getting the roof over the farm at the right height so that I would be able to access the breeders with ease later on. Once I was done with that, I started to work on the overall layout of the bill, making each section different in size so that the bill would have depth and not look like a long cardboard box. Once I was pleased with the layout, I started to add layers of detail at the base of the bill and worked on the front doorway to access the farm and windows. I didn't want to make it feel soulless because of the terror going on behind these walls but I wanted it to look warm and welcoming to potential customers. For the right side of the building where I plan to add the shop, I first added the roofs at different heights that would help the build pop. Having different roof elevations helps a lot to bring out a build more. Plus, I didn't want to create just any old butcher shop, I wanted it to look fancy. I wanted it to look like the business has been excellent. After seeing how the build was progressing, I needed someone with an artistic eye for decorating the interior. You summon me, V? This is Sarah. Sarah did some decor work for me in the past and she's super good at it. Do me a favor guys and help Sarah hit 1000 subs, I would appreciate it a lot. While I was finishing up the left side of the structure, Sarah started on the interior. I wanted a space that while being a business makes you feel like you could linger and spend time shopping. The cozy environment welcomes you to look around and maybe even socialize. I wanted to have a display that showed all the delectable goods available. Some benches to sit on while waiting for the shop owner to finish your order and maybe visit with the other patrons. For the freezer, I wanted to make as much use of the space. Given the height, I began thinking of a, a small freezer that you might find in a restaurant all the goods organized and visible. When you open the doors, the chill effect from the froster immediately gives you that freezing sensation. Now for the final touch. Using signs, I was able to make a floating text that doesn't require more to do. I pasted the info in the description if you want to try it for yourself. Basically, once you copy and paste it in the sign, it will show blank, but you can type any letter or words that you want to try out and you will see what will pop up.
no animals were harmed in the making of this video.